her little handprint and footprint and a piece of her hair. All Jennifer Blaze has left of her baby daughter Madison are keepsakes, photos, and memories of a life ended so very early. Jennifer was at work last year when prosecutors say her husband Matthew grabbed the baby from this crib and violently threw her. Tiny Madison later died at the hospital. Your actions are beyond all comprehension. Calling it the most horrendous crime he's ever seen, a judge sentenced Matthew Blaze to life in prison. After inflicting this traumatic brain injury, you merely placed her back in her crib and let her languish for over approximately six and a half to seven hours. Blaze had a well-documented history of prior violent behavior, including an incident when he hit his wife, which was reported to police. I honestly thought his abuse with me would never go to the children, ever. And I thought with him being an alcoholic, I could save him, and, and I lost, because I lost my daughter. Jan Collins, too, knows about loss. She keeps busy tending to her blueberry farm, but thoughts of her lost grandson are always present. I'm always uh, imagining that he's there too. Baby Ethan was killed nearly three years ago when his father violently threw him into a chair to get him to stop crying. Ethan's grandfather held the dying baby in the hospital. He was so vulnerable and he had been, um, we had let him down. So much, all of us. To make matters even more tragic for this couple, the man convicted of killing their grandson was their own adopted son, Gordon. Before Ethan's death, there had been several calls to authorities warning that conditions inside Gordon's home were dangerous, including a call from Gordon's mother. One of the questions they ask you is, do you have any concerns about the mental health of anybody in the family? And I said yes, that I thought Gordon was delusional. And then I, they asked me to explain that, which I did. And then they, it sounded like they, oh, well, that's not real delusional. Unfortunately, these cases in Montana and Maine are far from unique. An AP investigation found more than 750 children died during a six-year period while they had open files with the very child welfare agencies that were supposed to keep them safe. And these are children who are punched, beaten, thrown out of windows, set on fire, starved to death, uh, left alone in their homes when they're two and three years old. It is a rampant problem that does not exist to the same degree in the other rich democracies. Jennifer Blaze wishes child welfare had helped her family sooner. They tried to step in after Madison was killed and it was too late. Adding to the problem, federal funding may not be going where it's needed most. And some states refuse to disclose information on child abuse fatalities, citing laws to protect the identity of children. Haven Daily, Associated Press, Butte, Montana.